Well, let's take a look at some modern history and see what kind of, uh, should I call them lies? What kind of deception we have going on. Now, I did make a video recently looking more into ancient history, going back hundreds of years, of over a thousand years, and it was very easy to see how that can't be trusted. So I was looking at a modern history textbook. This is a college level textbook. And I found it very interesting looking at some of these quotes that are pretty much littered throughout. We see here we're in the Reconstruction era and there's a quote right here. It said blacks could not be quote transformed by proclamation end quote. A Louisiana sugar planter warned and I wrote it bigger here so you could see it. And I thought, who is the Louisiana sugar planter? Do they just not provide a footnote so we can't check this? We don't know. We go down a little further and we see another quote here. What's the use of being free if you don't own land enough to be buried in it? One man asked. Just one man. We don't know what his name is where he's from. If we continue reading in that paragraph, we'll see nothing more mentioned of him. He's just some mysterious man, I guess, who showed up and was quoted. Now he's in our textbook and we're learning about him. There's a strange example over here. Lizzie's maid passed me today when I was coming from church without speaking to me huffed one plantation mistress. They put the italicized writing in here to emphasize how upset she is, but we don't know who she is or where she's from or why she's being quoted here. How am I supposed to research this? Could you imagine turning in a research paper and saying uh, one man <laughs> or just some plantation mistress and not providing some sort of um, support for this. We'll go down further here. We have another one. Quote, the way we can best take care of ourselves is to have land, end quote. One former slave declared. Another explained that he wanted land, not a master. Another explained. I wonder who he explained to. We don't know. There's no footnote. There's nothing. Last one on this page. I wishes the children all in school, one black veteran asserted. We don't know who he is. We don't know anything. Now I fast forwarded to the Great Depression era. There was another somewhat strange story here. It's one sentence long. It says one writer told of an elderly woman who always took off her glasses to avoid seeing the maggots crawling over the garbage she ate. Good heavens! I mean, what a vivid, vivid detail. What an extreme example. The Great Depression must have been horrific. Eating garbage, taking off her glasses so she doesn't have to see the maggots that she ate. And then down here it continues on changing the story, but kind of maintaining the theme, quote, I don't want to steal. A Pennsylvania man wrote to the governor, but he won't let his wife and boy cry for something. I don't know. I didn't have the rest of the quote here. The page was cut off, but you'd think that a Pennsylvania man might have a name. Perhaps this letter is in the National Archives somewhere. I don't know. There's no footnote. There's no work cited. There's no bibliography. There's nothing. It's just uh, words on a piece of paper. But the story about the elderly woman kind of caught my interest, and I did some research. I wanted to find more information on this elderly woman. I thought it wouldn't be that hard. It was such an extreme example, but the best I could do was to find out in this book, I. 
I found a similar story. A Chicago widow told a social worker she always removed her glasses before cooking meat she had found to avoid seeing the maggots. So it's a little bit different in the former story in the other textbook. She was actually eating the garbage. Here, she's at least cooking the meat. But there's no footnote here, so I, I don't know if this is the same story, just told with sort of a different backdrop, perhaps. It's been altered some, I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody can know because they're not putting any footnotes in the textbooks that we're all reading. Now, I've pointed this out to some colleagues, and it's interesting that no one really cares. You know, they get a chuckle. Oh, yeah, they, they really should. That's very strange. You, you would think because I know if I turned in work such as this, I would... Uh, I would be failed. I would get a zero. But the people that wrote this textbook, I believe there's a team of five or six of them, PhD types, you know, they know better. I mean, they know much better than I would how, um, how the procedure works, how important it is. I mean, it's, it is very important to properly annotate. We're taught this in school, but not one footnote. And I didn't just find two examples you know, or two pages to share with you. This runs rampant throughout the entire book. Not one quote, no, I'm sorry, not one footnote in a five or six hundred page history book. I mean, even seeing the footnote, seeing how it's done would greatly help the student because it's such an ordeal going through this procedure, but if they were just to simply see it page after page, it would be, um, it would certainly serve a purpose. How could you not know how to do it after you've seen it year after year after year? It would be like second nature. You'd kill two birds with one stone, but it's almost as if they don't want anyone to see it. Probably, or I'm speculating here, they don't want you to see it because they don't want you to become good at it, but what I'm left with is this uh, troubling concern that they're just making things up. That they can invent any story they want and put it in a textbook and it will just be assumed it's real. One man one man, one plantation mistress. They can say whatever they want, and there's no way for you or I to check it or verify it. We just uh, have to assume it's all correct because it's in the textbook, and they just paint a picture. They just paint this, um, this picture in your mind of what's going on eating garbage, taking off her glasses. Ooh, the depression must have been really bad. So I don't know. I find it very strange, but what's even stranger really is I've been doing this for decades, and I've never noticed this before, up until a couple years ago. And then it now it's, uh, I can't help but notice. I see it all over the place. And remember, these books are uh, approved by politicians. This is a big industry, textbooks. This is huge. The amount of money that goes into these things and the uh, almost the competition between publishers. And you would think that at first glance, the first glance, one man, throw this in the garbage. We don't want this textbook. This is incomplete. They could be making things up, but this is the one. And there are many like this. I have not looked at all of them, obviously, but there are many that are exactly the same. No footnotes to be seen anywhere. So I don't know. Uh, perhaps there is a logical explanation for all this, but uh, I don't know what it is. If you have any comments on that, or if you know, I'd certainly appreciate it. So anyway, let me know what you think.